Okay, so now we're going to start to pick apart the measures of center, spread, and location. We've actually already talked about two measures of spread, spread itself and range. We're going to pick a bunch of or pick up a bunch of measures of center right now. So we're officially going to pick up mean, median, and mode, and then eventually we'll get to location. Location stands for um, things like the percentiles, the quartiles, the median, things like that. And, and there's a couple of overlaps. Some measures of center are also measures of location. Some measures of spread are also measures of location. So we'll, we'll start to talk about that and unpack all of that as we move along. Um, and this is all leading up to box plots. But before we discuss box plots, box plots, we need to discuss common statistics. They are broken into three main branches, measures of center, measures of spread, and measures of location. So for, for right now, we're going to talk about measures of center. And when we talk about measures of center, this is the C in your socks. So after we go through this, you can answer the C part of your socks. You could actually go back to examples one, two, and three and find the center and answer that part of your little write-up. All right, so the measure of center, or a measure of center, is a value in the center or in the middle of the data set. Typical measures of center are the mean and median, and in some cases, the mode. By far, the two most common are the mean and the median. So let's break down what the mean and the median are, and then I'm just gonna give us a couple of little examples of how we find the mean and median before we go through example four, which has a lot of data in it. All right, so the sample mean of a numerical sample, where you have all of your data values, right? X1, X2, X3, all the way up to X sub N, I don't know, and could be anything. If you have 20 observations, great. If you have 17 observations, great. If you have 1,000 observations, great. And is always your sample size. All right, so the sample mean is denoted by this symbol. And usually we say this out loud as X bar. Okay. So that symbol stands for sample mean. And before I answer this, ask yourself, is this a statistic or is this a parameter? If we're talking about the sample mean, statistic or parameter, well, if it's coming from a sample, it's going to be a statistic. So just reviewing that concept from chapter one, statistics and parameters, both numbers, they just come from different spots. Statistics come from samples, parameters come from populations. So we got the sample mean, we're going to call it X bar. And here's how we get a mean. And you, you've probably calculated an average at some point in your life. So you're going to add up all of the observations in your sample, and you're going to divide by the number of observations in the sample. So a, an example of this, um, let's say we get to your first midterm, and I need to find the average midterm score, the mean midterm score. And I have 30 students in a class. I'm going to add up everybody's score. So I'll have 30 data values. I will add them all up and then I will divide that by 30, and that will be my, my sample mean, okay? Or in that case, it would actually technically be the population mean if it was all 30 students. But for a sample mean, if you've got a sample, you sum up all of the observations in the sample and divide by the number of observations in the sample. So if I wanted to write this out in symbols, I would take all of my separate data values and add them together, and then I would divide by n, the sample size. This is fancy stats notation, or I should say it's fancy math notation. This guy right here, all right, that is capital sigma. It's a Greek letter. It's in the Greek alphabet. It's capital S in the Greek alphabet. So I'm just going to put this over here. All right, this is capital sigma in the Greek alphabet. Uh, I think the most common place you see capital sigma is you might see it in um, fraternity symbols. Um, the, they still use Greek letters to um, play out the, the names of their, their fraternities or sororities. But when we see it in stats, it means add. So what this symbol is saying is just saying add up all of the x values, right? Sum all of the values. So add up all of the x values. So sum all of the x's and divide by n. And it's just shorthand notation for us. So while this might look scary, it's just our, our, our math symbol saying add things together. All right. And since this is 
basically like capital S in our very in our alphabet. If you're capital S and you think about the, the word sum, that starts with an S, and that's why we chose that symbol. So it wasn't anything fancy, just we wanted to sum numbers together, and that's the capital S letter in the Greek alphabet. All right, so X bar, add up all of your values, divide by sample size. All right, population mean. This is denoted by mu. All right, so let me go ahead and say, if we were gonna say this symbol out loud, we would say mu. All right, kind of looks like a fancy M, but it, I think it also looks like a U that's a little fancy as well. But we would say this is mu. This is your population mean. Now, this symbol, is this a statistic or is this a parameter? Keep in mind, it's coming from the population. So this is actually a parameter. Okay. The only way to find the parameter is to run the census. All right, but if I was to take the average of all values in the entire population and divide by the sample size, or the population size, excuse me, that would be mu. If we go back to that example where I was talking about the average score of midterm one in a class of 30, if the class of 30 really, if I had all 30 numbers and I added those 30 numbers and divided by the number 30, that would be mu. That would be the population mean. A sample mean would be um, if, if I had that class of 30, if I maybe randomly chose five students, added their five midterm scores up and divided by five, that would have been a sample mean. But if I'm doing it for the entire class, that's the population mean, okay? And those are examples where the population is relatively small. It's not too hard to find the parameter in that case. All right, the sample median. Here's our next measure of center. So the sample median is obtained by first ordering the n observations from smallest to largest with any repeated values included so that every sample observation appears in the ordered list, then. All right, so once we get everything in order, then the sample median is either the single middle value, if you have an odd number of observations, or it's the average of the two middle values if you have an even number of observations, okay? So I'll say this again, if you wanna find the median, take your data set, order it from low to high, Keeping in mind our calculators can sort our data from low to high, so that's not too bad. Get our data in our list, sort it, okay. If you have an odd number of observations, so in your data set, maybe you have 11 observations, there will be one middle number and that will be your median. But there's plenty of times where we have an even number of, of data values, it happens all the time. So then we actually have two middle numbers and what we wanna do is just take the average of those two middle numbers. That will be our median. The mode of the data set is the value that occurs the most often. All right, so whichever data value has the most repeats, that's what our mode is. And it's entirely possible that you have multiple modes. All right, just depends on the data set. Everything changes, just like I said, depending on what your data sets, uh, what your data set numbers are. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples finding the mean and median for small data sets, just so we can play this out, okay? So let me do data set one here. And I'm going to give you the most boring data set I can think of, one, two, three, four, and five, okay? So I want, from this data set, I wanna find the mean, and I wanna find the median. All right, if I wanna find the mean, I need to add these five numbers together and divide by the number five because I have five numbers in my data set. So I would do one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and I would divide that by five. All right, so let's see what the mean is or the sample mean is in this problem. So we will do one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and I will divide that by five, and I'm looking at the number three. All right, now also, for the median, let me flip back. If I want the median, right, I need to number, or excuse me, order my observations from smallest to largest, which was already happening, and then I have an odd number of observations. I have five data points, so I'm gonna have one single middle value. And you can look at it. There's the number right in the middle. So the median is also three in this particular problem. 
And when the mean and median are the same, you actually get to say that the data is symmetric, but we'll get to that a little bit later on, okay? All right, so there was data set one. All right, let's try data set two. Okay, now let's say it went one, two, three, four, comma, 100. Okay, if we're gonna answer the same two questions. What is the mean? What is the median? And before I actually show you what the mean and median are, try and get ahead of me a little. Is the mean about to change? Yes or no? Is the median about to change? Yes or no? What happens when all of a sudden you have an outlier? And even though we haven't talked about what an outlier officially is, and I haven't given you the formulas, this is an outlier. This is an unusually high number, right? Our centers were around three. All of a sudden this is up at 100. That's very, very high, relatively speaking. So let's see if we can find X bar and if we can find the median, okay? So for X bar, I wanna add these numbers together. And then I still wanna divide by five because I still have five data points. It's just one of them's an outlier now. All right, so the mean definitely changed. It went from three to 22. All right, and the median, again, I need to order these from low to high, which they already are, and find the middle number, which is still three. So things to take note, the median stayed the same, right? It, it resisted an outlier. We will define that term in a little bit. It's called a resistant statistic, but you can see the median did not change. This, this high point moved from five to 100, median stayed the same, but the mean was definitely affected by outliers, right? That mean jumped from, three to 22. And you can also start to imagine if this was, instead of 100, if this was 1,000, the median would have stayed three, the mean would have gotten that much larger. 10,000, median would have stayed the same. If this had become negative 1 million, right, median would have stayed the same. So since the median is the middle number, it's not affected by what's happening on the outside of your data set, which is why we say the median is resistant to outliers. And I'll revisit that idea later on. Now let me restore this to our original data set two. And let's look at data set three. Okay. Okay, so there's data set three. If I wanna find the mean, I need to add these now six numbers up and divide by six. So I'm gonna do six plus one plus four plus three plus five plus two, and I wanna divide that by six. So let's see what we're looking at. looks like 3.5, okay. In order to find the median, I actually have to put these in order from low to high, so give me a moment. I'm gonna just reorder these. It looks like the lowest is one, and maybe you're seeing it. I pick this one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So I've reordered it. Let's flip back and think about our directions. I have six data points this time, so I need to take the average of the two middle values. So if I look at this, these are the two numbers that are in the middle, and I need to take the average of those two. So for the median here, this would be three plus four over two. All right, and if I crunch that on my calculator, divide by two, oh, when you know my median is 3.5. So there's just a look at some smaller data sets. We're gonna to get to a larger one with example four in just a moment, but that's how you can crunch mean and median. So mean, add up all of your observations, divide by the sample size, median, get your, your data values or your data set in order from low to high, find either the single middle number or the two middle numbers and average them, okay? All right, so with that, let's start to take a look at number four, or example four. And like always, as I read this, see if you can identify the variable in this problem. All right, 
So 40 students were enrolled in a section of STAT 130, a general education course in statistical reasoning during the fall quarter of 2009 at Cal Poly SLO. The instructor made course materials, grades, and lecture notes available to the students on a class site, excuse me, a class website, and software kept track of how often each student accessed the class site. One month after the course began, the instructor requested a report that indicated how many times each student had accessed the web page on the class site. The 40 observations were, and here we go. So I've got 40 data points. I'm going to ask you to find a mean, median, which measure of center we, should we use, that kind of thing. And before we do that, I want us to figure out what is the variable in this problem. Okay, so we had 40 students, that's our sample. Okay, what was varying amongst them? What did this 20 represent? Was it that student's age? Was it how many friends that student had on Facebook? Was it the number of apples they ate that day? Nope, it wasn't any of those. So what we're looking at here is this is how many times students access that web page. All right, so our variable here, number of times website accessed. And you have to remember back in 2009, this was long before Canvas, so this is kind of in the, the infant um, stages of Canvas. I don't know that they were actually using Canvas at this point. Could have been any learning management system. We're all on Canvas now, but this was our first look at putting course materials, grades, lecture notes up on some kind of class website so that students could access them later. So let's just take a look at what's happening in these 40 um, with these 40 observations from these students. So we got this student went on the website 20 times in one month, 37 times in a month, four times. We got this student never showed up, didn't want to deal, right? We got someone showing up 84 times in a month. We got this guy or a girl showing up 331 times in a month. And just if we were being generous, let's pretend there were 31 months, 31 months, 31 days in a month. So if we take the number of times that student accessed the site and divide it by 31, it means that student is going on to Canvas about 10 and a half times a day on average. And you should ask yourself, do you go on Canvas 10 and a half times a day? I certainly don't as an instructor. Maybe you're going on that often, uh, but, and that's just average. That doesn't mean that this student did it every day. There were some days he was over average, some days he was under average. That's, that's quite a few times. So just looking at it, I got a bunch of zeros Right, uh, and I got what I'm suspicious. I think this is an outlier. That would be my guess. I know we haven't officially given the definition of an outlier yet, but I, I think that's probably an outlier. So in terms of what does the sample mean? What would I need to do to calculate that? I would need to add these 40 digits up on my calculator and then divide by 40. So I don't want to be on my calculation screen and do 20 plus 37 plus 4 plus 20, so on and so forth, and then divide that number by 40. I'm, I'm gonna make a typo, so I definitely don't wanna do that on my calculator. There is a way to do it inside of your lists, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Hey Math 43, now that we've read through example four and figured out the variable, those first two questions ask, what do the sample mean and what are the sample median? And we can go ahead and do this by hand. You could, for the sample mean, take all 40 of those digits, add them together, and then divide by 40. Right? That, would, that would be obnoxious, it would take a while, but you could do it. And for the median, you could do the same thing. right? You could take all the data values and order them from low to high, and then because we have 40 data values, we'll have a middle two, and we could take the average of those middle two. And so we can do this by hand, but you can start to see how cumbersome all of this becomes. This is only 40 data values. What if you had 1,000 data values or 10,000 data values? We, we really don't want to do it by hand. We want to get technology to find those numbers for us. So we want tech to crunch the numbers and then us as the humans, we as the humans, will interpret what they mean. So I want to show you how on your, on your calculator, you can get this mean and median much faster than by doing it, um, doing it by hand. So the first thing we got to do is load all of this data into our calculator. I cheated a little. I did it ahead of time so mine's in there. You might need to pause the, the video just to catch up. Uh, like I 
I always recommend I go to the bottom of my list and I take a look and say, okay, the 41st entry is the first blank one, which is good because I had 40 students in my sample. So let's figure out how we get uh, 23.1. I'm going to go back to my home screen. So second and quit. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to hit that stat button. And we've taken a look at this point at edit sort ascending, sort descending, and clear list, but we haven't gone over to this calc menu. So hit the right arrow key, and there are a whole bunch of other functions in here, and we will get to a good proportion of them. But for right now, we're going to do one variable stats. So I'm going to hit enter, and some of you will have this set up, and some of you won't. And so I want to take a moment right now to adjust our calculator mode our settings so that we all have the same screen. So the, the newer TI-84s look like this. The older TI-84s do not. The TI-83s do not. So I want us to just reset so we all have the same view screen. So I will come back to this in a moment, but here's a one-time fix we got to do. Hit your mode key, not second in mode, but actual mode. So some of you, again, have this interface. The newer ones have an even more uh, updated version of this, but scroll down and eventually we're going to get to something where you see math print against classic. So we're going to go over to classic and hit enter so that classic has the black background. If you'll look right now, math print has the black background. So when I hit enter, you can see now classic is flashing with the black background. So that's one thing we all need to do. And if you missed how I did that, I'll go back to my home screen. This time hit mode and scroll down. All right. Once you've ha highlighted classic, the other thing we have to do is we have to go turn our stat wizards off. So stat wizards are almost at the bottom here. So let me go to stat wizards. I'm going to get into that line, that row, and hit the right arrow key. And again, I want to hit enter because I want off to have the black background. So there we go. So now that we've done this two button fix or this two function fix, all of our screens will look the same from here on out. So let me go back to my home screen. This doesn't look too much different, but let's hit stat. And again, we're going to leave the edit menu behind. Well, we're not going to leave it behind, but we're going to move on. Go to calc, and then we want one var stats. So let's hit enter here. And now all of our calculator screens should look like this. So I need to tell my calculator where to look. It can crunch numbers for a while, but it just needs to know which list to look at. I would like it to look at L1. So I'm going to hit enter and all sorts of statistics are going to pop up. So let's talk about what these statistics represent. This X bar, yeah, there's your sample mean. All right, so here's my sample mean of 23.1, right? And we could write class, web, class website visits per month times the class website was accessed, something in terms of the unit. So I want the context in there. But you see the average was 23.1. All right, I'll get to what these, these numbers are in just a little bit, but I also want you to take note, this, there's this little down arrow key. Whenever that happens on your calculator, it's your calculator's way of communicating that there's more numbers, there's more to look at. So let's hit the down arrow key, and you'll see as soon as I hit the down arrow key, you'll notice there's now a down and an up arrow key. And again, your calculator's trying to say, I have more to show you, either if you head up or down, but I want us to just hit down for a while. So if you scroll all the way down, all of a sudden, you're seeing these, these numbers pop up at the end, and the, from, the third line from the bottom says median. So there's my median, right? So that's where I got my 13 visits per month, or 13 times the class website was accessed. You can also see the min and max here, right? So I could find the spread from one of our stats. I could find the range if I subtracted those two numbers. Let me scroll back up, and I just want to talk about what some of these other symbols mean. We're going to get to SX and Sigma X in a little bit. I want to focus on the second and third line. So if you look at the second line, you see this summation symbol, right? So I've got my capital Sigma and it's saying add up all the X's. So what that's saying is if I added up all of these numbers, right, I would get 924. And in terms of the context of this question, we're saying that for that teacher's 40 students, between the 40 students, collectively, they accessed the class website 924 times that month. And you can also think of this as 
if you were gonna crunch the mean by hand, right? What do you have to do to get the mean? You have to add up all of these numbers. If I added up all those numbers and got 924, what would I then do with 924? I would divide it by 40 and I would get the mean, right? So that's what that second line is, is telling you or is trying to communicate to you. So let me re, re crunch that, all right? This sum of the x's squared, right? So what that's saying is we took every data value, we took 20, we squared it. We took 37, we squared it. We took four, we squared it. So we took all 40 of these data numbers, we squared them, and then we added them together. And it's a much larger number because when you square numbers, things get larger. And you might be asking, well, like, why are you doing this? That has, that has to do with the stat that we're gonna crunch a little bit later. But there's your look at one bar stats. Make sure you know it. All right, we're gonna be using it all over the place. So again, stat, calc, one, and I'm gonna go with L1. If my data was in L2, I would go with L2. And then you can scroll up and down to find all the statistics you need. All right, thanks guys, bye. Okay, now that we've seen that on our calculator, let's go ahead and talk about which measure of center is more appropriate right now. So if you were going to write up your socks for this, again, keeping in mind for my socks, my, my spread is zero to 331 right now right, website accesses. Um, and I wanna talk about the center. You could quote either one of these. They're both correct. So I wouldn't dock you if you use the mean or the median, but one of them is a more appropriate measure of center. It's a better measure of center. So if we look at all of these, these data points, which is more representative of how many times an average student went on the website? Was it 23.1 or was it 13? And I want us to think back, we had an outlier here and we haven't done the formula, but 84 is actually also an outlier. You had two outliers, okay? And if we go back to that previous page or that previous example where I put those data sets in, which statistic did better against outliers? And let's compare again data set one and two. So if we look here, data set one, there were no outliers, mean and median were the same, okay? Here there was an outlier. Which one of these resisted the outlier? The median did. So medians can resist outliers. So the idea here is if you have a data set and it has outliers present, which this does, and again, I'll come back to why 84 and 331 are outliers, but trust me, they are. So when outliers are present, we typically use the median as the measure of center. So when outliers are present, we use the median as the measure of center. And medians are resistant statistics. So this is a different vocab term, a new vocab term. It's a, defined a little bit later in the packet, but it's a resistant stat. There are a couple of resistant statistics, median's one of them. And that means that they resist outliers. They're not affected by outliers. So keep in mind your one bar stats calculator command, we will use that all the time. It's gonna be probably the most common calculator command you wind up using, okay? So we've got our data points, our data set. We were able to find the mean and median and discuss which was the better measure of center. Both are measures of center, but the median was a little bit more appropriate here because of the outliers.